And welcome back to the studio, everybody. That was a great innovation talk, and it looks like we're staying with Art Dynamics. I have two very interesting guests with me. I have Linda Tong, Chief Product Officer at Art Dynamics, and I also have Eli Greenfield, the CTO. How are you getting on, guys? Doing great. Doing awesome. Yeah, thanks for having conference. us. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for coming. So, look, Art Dynamics is on everyone's mind. It's been talked about, about a lot. How would you describe App Dynamics? I'm going to throw that out to both of you there. All right, I'll take it first. Um, so the App Dynamics platform, basically the best way to get end-to-end -end visibility across your application to detect, uh, diagnose, and remediate any problem you find, no matter what layer it, it lives in. So the best definition of what App Dynamics is and what you can do is actually in this awesome video on YouTube. I believe if you search Zane Powell, <laughs> you can see this great uh, uh, definition of how you can leverage App Dynamics to unlock visibility in your application. Is that right, Zane? I think, I think Linda, I think we need to actually get up on the screen. I think so everyone can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so look, uh, next question uh, goes to Eli. How do App Dynamics and Cisco connect application visibility and business insights to enable all the global enterprises that are working in today's market? So AppDynamics has always been about taking your application data and putting that in the context of your business data and making sure that we can correlate what we know about your code and how it's running uh, to the most important things that your users are doing and the processes that matter most to your business. As part of Cisco, what we've done is we've been taking AppDynamics and correlating that data down to the other products, technologies, applications that Cisco has so that we can connect that same business data through the application layer all the way down to the infrastructure and network layer to be able to connect all that back up to what the business actually cares most about and help them drive transformation while maintaining their core KPIs. Fantastic, Eli. I actually have another question for you. So sure. I've heard this acronym, we love acronyms at Cisco, Biz Dev Ops. Can you tell us a little bit about this and how's App Dynamics really enabling organizations to use this operating model? Yeah, Biz Dev Ops is kind of a funny term. Probably most of you have heard our, the term DevOps, right? And DevOps has <clears throat> been around for, for a few years. It's all about the idea that we need to break down silos between these two organizations and improve communication between the developers and the IT organization, which is great. It helps them move much more, uh, much more agilely. But what we really need to do is break down that last remaining wall, which is between the technical organization, the dev and ops organization, and the business side, so that our IT and dev teams can make their decisions and, and take their actions really in the context of what matters to the business, and they can together work together to figure out how to really allocate their resources appropriately. Yeah. So it's all about speed and it's all about agility. So exactly. that brings me on to my next question. Another two buzzwords, machine learning and AI. Linda, what is Art Dynamics doing to use machine learning and AI at the moment? Well, actually since the very beginning of App Dynamics, one of our key innovations is how we've been leveraging ML. And so one of the things we've been doing is around dynamic baselining. Identifying your application performance is really difficult and people have traditionally had to set their own sort of baselines and understand what does normal look like. We've created these dynamic baselines to recognize seasonality and ultimately what is normal for you so that we can help alert you when those go off. And then ultimately what we've actually released more recently is how we identify uh, when to alert you. So anomaly detection of when does something look off? When are you no longer operating at normal? And when do you have a problem in your ecosystem? So we can tell you intelligently that there's a problem and then we can help you with root cause analysis so that you could quickly troubleshoot and get to the solution as fast as possible. Fantastic. Now, App Dynamics is a part of Cisco and we see you guys as a great partnership. So my next question is really about how are we working together? How is App Dynamics and Cisco tying together network and infrastructure visibility with an application centric view? And that goes to you, Linda. So uh, last year we actually announced a really great integration with uh, Cisco ACI, so the application centric infrastructure. We found this great opportunity to get not only application visibility, but through the lens of how you actually map that down to the network level. So within your data center, you can see how your application's performing, and if there are network problems, you could easily begin to troubleshoot those. Uh, more recently, so this morning, we talked about an integration with Cisco Workload Optimization Manager, where you can actually start to see uh, underlying infrastructure and how that might be impacting the application, and how that might be impacting your business. So, 
if something does go wrong, whether it's you don't have enough compute or there's no storage or there's something wrong with the network, we can understand where those problems lie in your infrastructure and exactly where at the application level it's causing a problem for your end users. Yeah, fantastic. So really, you know, time to detection is really, really speeded up. So Eli, you know, looking at this, what are some of the use cases? Where can we really see this being used? Well, so um, the classic use case for AppDynamics, really the, our bread and butter is around monitoring application performance and making sure that you can detect those problems and, and diagnose root cause and correct them as quickly as possible, right? Um, now, what we're seeing uh, more and more is people leaning into connecting that down into the other layers and driving that connection all the way back to the business layer. Um, this level of sort of visibility allows our customers not only to make sure their applications are running, but start to invest in bigger projects like migrating to the cloud or just engaging in digital transformation in general because they know what their, what their SLAs are and what levels they're looking for and they know how to make sure that they continue to maintain those as they make these investments. Fantastic. Now look, this sounds really, really exciting and I'm interested to find out more about the roadmap. Where do you really see things going? So Eli, what have you done since last year, since App Dynamics and Cisco released Central Nervous System Vision 1? There's been a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, innovations that have gone into Apti over the past year, way more than we can list now. Um, but when it comes to the central nervous system, our investments have really been about continuing to make sure that we pour more data into the system so that data that we've collected on behalf of our customers is incredibly valuable to them to solve these problems with additional connections, additional data sources, and also then tying it down into the other Cisco products like ACI, like uh, Intersight, to make sure that we can drive action out of that system uh, when you do discover a problem. Brilliant, so really tying everything in together. Absolutely. So Linda, what is the uh, sort of roadmap for the next six months? I know that you released some new products today. Can you give us a little sneak peek into these? Yeah, sure. So today we just announced uh, the experience journey maps and we're really excited to give you that visibility at the end user level. But over the next six months, uh, we're going to continue those investments that Eli just mentioned around our platform and being able to start to uh, increase our scale so that we can start to be pulling in, uh, we can start pulling in more domain data from all these different sources and we can start to give you that kind of visibility. Uh, and then we're going to start to build these end-to-end -end experiences that allow you to do more than application performance. So we can start to give you insights into things like security and deeper network insights. And so we're really excited about how we're going to unlock that and really bring home some new uh, innovation for the broader Cisco uh, port portfolio. Fantastic. Well, look, guys, thanks very much. It was great to have you here. And we're going to throw it over to the Alaska Airlines case study. When people think of Alaska Airlines, they think of airplanes, they think of airports, and that of course is the actual business that we're in. But what we're very cognizant of is the fact that e-commerce is the first interaction that many people have with us. Alaska Airlines is the fifth largest domestic airline in the United States. We do our best to be competitive through scrappy innovation. We were the first airline to sell airline tickets online. That culture of innovation is driving us to have more guest centricity and more product focus to provide the absolute best guest experience. Our customers are accessing our site with multiple different platforms, from web to mobile, kiosk at the airport. It's extremely crucial for us to provide consistent digital experience. Guest experience or our digital platforms is key. If we don't get that right, then they certainly won't become loyal guests. Our technology teams are working in an incredibly complex and data-rich environment. AppDynamics has provided us a deep visibility into our application's performance on front-end and back-end. That holistic view gives me the peace of mind that we are actually delivering the right experience for our guests. Cognition Engine is taking that dynamic baseline to the next level. The ability to quickly figure out the root cause is a big deal for us, and we are using Cognition Engine to make our mean time to resolution even faster. Our mean time to detection went from hours to less than 10 minutes, which is a huge win for us. From 2017 to 2018, we were able to reduce the number of SEV1 outages that we had by 60%, and we're continuing to sustain that. We are using a hybrid environment on-premise and in the cloud, a lot of microservices and serverless computing 
The adoption of Azure and using the cloud has been a great enabler for our teams. It allows them to break up little bits of business logic to experiment with them and deploy them quickly. With AppDynamics, the developers, the engineers who are focused on trying to solve a guest problem can not only consider just the user experience or just the performance of the service in the back end, but how everything ties together. And in partnership with AppD, we can be sure that we're building solutions that are healthy and reliable. We can get a holistic view of the performance that really manifests itself in the things that matter to our guests. I'm really passionate about how we're using the latest technologies to solve real pain points for our customers. The fact that we are making travel experience easy, joyful, and something they look forward to every time they travel makes me excited. Again, everyone, and I just want to wrap up that interview I had there with Linda and Eli. I think two key points that we need to remember. AppDynamics is integrating deeper with all of Cisco's portfolio with ACI, we have CWOM, and have really, really exciting news about the new Customer Insights platform. We all know that it's all about customer experience nowadays, so I'm really excited to see what the future has. Now, I'm going to throw it out to Steve, who's at the at Dynamics booth. Steve, Abs what do you have for us? Hey there, my friend. Thank you so much. I am as far from you as I can possibly get right now. We're all the way down at the far end of the uh, Cisco showcase in the WAS. This is where you come to see Cisco's full, robust portfolio, to see all the different solutions of Cisco at work in everyday scenarios. So make sure you get down here. We're going to talk now about App Dynamics a little bit more, continue the story. We've been hearing about AppD all day long, starting with the keynote right into two and innovation talks. I've decided that Liz Santoni has got to be the hardest working woman in all of Cisco. <laughs> She's everywhere, I don't know how she thinks. Now what I want to do is start taking that app dynamic story that we've been building up and I want to start putting it into action. A lot of time has been spent trying to introduce people to what AppD is all about and how it fits into the Cisco portfolio and platform. Now that people understand it, now we want to get you started taking those first steps. I got Ben Haddix over here with me. How are you, bud? I'm doing great, how are you? So good to be back with you. So, yes. um, solutions engineer here with App Dynamics, and Ben is a perfect person to tell this story. Let's start off by talking about how AppD is connecting application visibility with business insights. Good place to start. It is a good place to start, and that started a couple years ago when we released our business IQ. So one of the things we do at AppDynamics is we take every metric we collect, whether it's business, infrastructure, network, and we do it to a single end user transaction. So everything gets correlated back to that single end uh, user transaction, and that becomes our single point of truth. So by pulling in the business metrics, now we're saying it's important to keep IT up, but what's that impact on your business? If my application's down, what kind of revenue impact is it? How is my uh, user base being affected by this? So that's where, that's where it really all started, and then that kind of fed into the CNS vision, and now we're putting that into applications. I just love that. It's really exciting to see what this evolution is. We've been hearing examples all day here of AppDynamics integration. I'd love to hear from you, your own personal perspective. What are the capabilities that you're hearing about from AppD customers? So our customers are really excited about the fact of these integrations we're starting to build. So we have a new team at AppD um, that is being led by uh, Brian Paul. Mm -hmm. And what that team does is they uh, enable our customers and our partners to use APIs to integrate their tools in to pull our data out and to put data into our, uh, our solution. Because what we're finding is that when you build an AI ops framework right now, it's going to take like a conglomerate, it's going to take the whole village, so to speak. So when you can take all of the tools and solutions that a client is using and meld them all together into one complete AI ops framework, that's what they're excited about, and that's where these integrations come in. And in fact, some of the integrations I have here, if you want to take a look. Yeah, let's dive um, in. Show us. So a Are you okay to hold the mic? I'm, I'm good. Thing? I'm good, yeah. Ben we'll do it totally all. multi we'll do it all. can do it I'm all. Done. I'm just going to stay <laughs> back over here. All right, so where do we want to begin? Because I know we've got a few demos running So a couple, a couple of the ones that we started with. So um, last year, we, we, when we came in with Cisco two years ago, we started looking at, well, the obvious thing is how can we get into the network? How can we bring more of the network in? And one of the first things we did was ACI, which is the Software Defined Network by Cisco. So we've actually integrated ACI into our solution. And by doing that, what we've able to do, I'm looking at an application now where I'm having issues and I'm in my network dashboard where I'm looking to say, okay, I know I've got issues in my network here, but how do I find out what's going on? Well, I can take a deeper dive and I can start looking at my connections and just by coming in, I can troubleshoot and go straight into ACI. And in fact, 
I opened this up earlier and dug in, I was able to see that there were some policies that were being created and deleted that were affecting how the application was working. So quickly, without even having to be a network expert, without having to be an application expert, I could go in and say, hey, I know you just changed some stuff in the network that's affecting our revenue stream. Someone needs to go fix that and get the right people in to fix is it. Is this more a speed to diagnosis story? Is this more of a comprehensive overview story? How do you communicate this directly to your customer? It's both. And if, if you remember Danny talking about that CNS vision, we're on the left side of that vision of visibility, bringing in more visibility into app dynamics. So we have partners out there um, that are doing just this kind of thing where it's, what's that extra data that we're not, that we don't get, but when that data comes in, again, we go back, we've got it correlated down to a single end user transaction, which is kind of the key theme that um, CTOs and CEOs, CIOs are looking for is, what's my end user, what's my customer experience with my application, so we can pull in that extra data and give them that view. Absolutely. Now you've got a number of different things that you can right. walk us through with this. Show right. us some of the other capabilities. Correct, so on the other end of this, we can go into the um, CWAM integration. So here we have a dashboard that's showing all of our business metrics, architecture metrics, um, transaction metrics, but we're pulling in CWAM data. So CWAM will actually look at everything that's running and it can scale up or scale down infrastructure as needed on demand by the application. But I don't even have to leave the app the screen with the integration we built with the Turbonomic folks uh, in CWAM we can now pull everything in, and now you can see I can come down here and I can take actions just from this screen without even having to leave it. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, in terms of the organizations that are making the best use of this right now, does mm -hmm. it seem to be fitting really with very large organizations or small organizations keying off these benefits as well? It's both, okay. it's both. Um, you'll see larger organizations because they get infrastructures that are so big and hard to manage that you need something that can tie everything together and set that framework up so they can quickly resolve the issues that are impacting the revenue. For the little businesses, they see value in this because they may have an infrastructure, but they don't have all the resources to be able to manage that, and so it becomes cost-saving to pull something like this in and to help them manage that, uh, that infrastructure. Okay, very cool. In terms of FAQ, so you've had a lot of visitors here today, and again, for those of you who aren't here at the show, we just encourage you, there's something about being here in the space where you can come down and talk to people like Ben and the rest of the AppD team. And I've always got to say, and I say this to Dawn all the time, there is nobody more passionate here within our Cisco family about what it is that you do than the AppD team. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the new people who are on board as well, we're really feeling the passion from all of you guys. Let's talk about the FAQs of the people who've been visiting you here in the show. What right. have they been coming up and primarily wanting to see from you? So I think it comes down, it's the, the new integrations and the new things that we're doing with our partners. Um, they ask a lot of things about some of the newer technologies, how we're handling Kubernetes, how we're going into the cloud. Um, a lot of the big cloud players out there, like uh, AWS, Azure, IBM Cloud, Google Cloud, we have integrations with their services, being able to uh, play well in those clouds, being able to monitor applications across multiple clouds. So if you get into like a multiple cloud or a hybrid cloud situation, we can track a single user across all those environments um, and stitch it all together so you can see what's going on and where your issues are. So we get a lot of questions along that, um, but mainly uh, along this new CNS stuff of how does that all fit together? What's it really mean? All so. right, so let's actually go to the new, because again, we kicked off this morning, there was a lot of AppDynamic stock, uh, Cisco yep. Intersight capabilities, deep dives connecting everything from the application all the way down through the stack. Let's talk about what's happening, and we were hearing about it more in innovation uh, talk during, uh, uh, listen, Tony's talk, but that new right. experience journey map, uh, and solutions and territory, yeah. can you walk us through what's going on with that here? Yeah, so um, here I've pulled it up. This is over on our beta server. Uh, of course, we made the announcement um, on this today. So what this does, this will be done out of the box. So if you have our EUM and you have our analytics, this will be automatically generated out of the box. And it's just showing you a flow of how users are flowing through your site and your applications on a page by page at a business view. What's my drop off at each stage? Am I having uh, issues on each stage? So if I highlight like take for instance here, I can see I've got a 27% drop off. Well, all my revenue is being generated on the back end and I'm already losing a quarter of my customers. But I can highlight here real quick and I can see I'm getting a lot of JavaScript errors on the front end. So now I already know that I've got an issue on my website 
and I've got a lot of drop off before I'm even getting to my revenue. So I need to go fix this right away. So being able to quickly see from a business standpoint how customers are flowing through this journey of uh, generating revenue and being able to quickly identify, because it may, be, it may be something business related. All your application, all these squares could be blue and you may still have like a 50, 60% drop off. Now you've got a business issue that you need to go take a look at, but you're getting all of that information because again, we collect everything and correlate it back to that single end user. So now you can see how your business and how your user is interacting together. So cool. Talk to us a little bit about the nature of the integration play, right? So you brought up ACI before and how we're right. fitting in on the ACI side. How else is this integrating within the rest of what's happening within the, the portfolio? So again, it goes into the business side of things. So as, as we get more and more of our partners coming in and, and integrating things together, um, they're looking at us to provide that data from that end user point of view. So um, we've got a lot of cool things. I know MOOCsoft's been over here in our booth uh, doing some talks about the integration we just released with them. We have some uh, integrations with ServiceNow and their CMDB. So you're seeing things like with Turbonomics and CWAM and Cisco. On the other side, Cisco's been working hard on doing Tetration, uh, SD-WAN, ACI. So you're starting to see a lot of, of uh, people coming in and saying, okay, how do, we, how do we become a part of this? Because at the end of the day, that's what we're building, is a framework, a framework that you can take and set in an environment and say, this is how you're going to run AI ops, this is how you're going to get that community to talk together and correlate it all back to that single end user. So let's talk about how people actually do integrate. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if they're right now at a point where they're, let's say that they're building their infrastructure, they're building out their, their organization to modernize for the future, they're moving toward those next steps to make sure that they are catching up for internet of the future capabilities. What is their first step in integrating with AppD if they haven't brought AppD capability on board yet? Where do you right. suggest they begin? So um, the first step would be to um, talk to their Cisco rep or um, even talk to their partners. If they have a partner that's managing their environment, um, right now we are spinning up a bunch of our partners, enabling them on this very idea of an AI ops framework and integrating. Um, but the first step would be talk to your Cisco rep, um, ask them to bring in AppD and to see how this integration fits together. Um, if they have a partner, bring the partner along as well. Because again, um, at the end of the day, CNS is more than just, uh, hey, here we are to, to offer you a solution. CNS is a framework of bringing everything together to work in a, uh, the most efficiently for a customer. So if we can get the Cisco reps, the partner reps, and the AppD reps all together, um, we can give you the best solution that will fit the needs that you, you have. That's so cool. All yeah. right, I'm gonna, I want to ask you just a tiny bit more about this. Before we do that though, uh, we've got some mascots sitting back over yes. behind my, I'm yes. going to be stealing all four of the ones that are sitting well, here, actually, so none of them for you, they're all actually, for me. Actually, this is, this is the second time we've done this. Okay. So I, I felt like it was a second date, so one of these is yours, like, from me. It's like Hacker Bear. Wait a minute, <laughs> only one of them is mine? <laughs> one of, okay, you can have two. Isn't that what everybody says? You know, I've got two kids at home, can well, I have there, two bears? There you go. That's right, <laughs> I, can only, I can only carry two bears, can't carry anymore. All right, so talk to me about Hoodie Bear. Okay, our hoodie bear is, uh, you can go over to the lounge and you can get a hoodie bear. And when you go over to the lounge, we actually do a, uh, it's a, it's a express your, I guess it's express your digital self. You can take a interview, it's a five question survey. And then at the end of the survey, they tell you what kind of digital person you are. Are you a digital diva? Are you a digital rager? Are you a digital drifter? Digital so it has like, I, re I refuse to take it. I was afraid it would come up like, Digital idiot, please leave the premises. So, <laughs> but no, it's really cool. It's a lot of fun. Um, we got some cool things, uh, places you can sit down and chat. Um, I know we've got soda, food, um, water bottles, the bears, everything. That's so. very cool. Right now, by the way, uh, back in the studio, I know that uh, uh, we're going to be tossing it back, uh, throwing it back up to, to Nish and to David in just a moment. And okay. they're both thinking, are those bears mine? <laughs> and uh, the answer is, yeah, yeah. that's okay. Uh, actually, it's to Zane. I'm going to get a third bear for David. So uh, don't worry, Zane, Nish, we're gonna, look, all right. For fine, you, we're Zane. Talk to Zane here as well. <laughs> all right, so we've got about one minute left. Okay. I want to kind of put the button on what we're talking about here for the rest of the week, we're going to continue to hear highlights from AppD and everything right. that's going on with the App Dynamics team. Um, kind of give us the big overview of what we're going to expect next in the picture as we continue to roll through 2020 mm -hmm. and we start to head toward what's going to be taking place eventually in uh, US end of May, beginning of June. What are we going to continue to grow toward? So I think you're going to see us continue to grow out that CNS vision, um, looking at bringing in more integrations uh, you're going to see stronger integrations into the cloud. 
um, with the cloud services, uh, being able to go into some of those native cloud services and monitoring those. You'll see a lot more of the serverless stuff coming out. Um, there are some really big things. Things I'm not allowed to talk about because I know Danny and Linda and Eli are probably listening, but uh, <laughs> um, there are a lot of cool things. Our guys are working hard and I think innovations like the, the experience journey map are just the beginning and there are, some, there are some really cool things on the horizon. There are so it's, many cool things yeah. on the horizon. Again, we are crazy excited for everything that AppDynamics has been doing. Always a great story for us to tell here on the Cisco side, because again, it just builds toward that depth and breadth of what we're capable of. AppD's just been such an amazing addition. Love, ben, uh, thank you, and we thanks love for Cisco. taking so We time. love being a part of Cisco. Say that again a little we, louder, We please. love being a part of Cisco, and we love Cisco Live, and you know what? This is my first time to Europe, and I thank you guys. You're amazing. All right, fine, I'll pay you later. Well All done. Right. All right, guys, so I'm on my way back Back to the studio, and I'm stealing every single one of the bears. All right, Fantastic. Zane, Nish, back up to you guys. I'll see you shortly. Thanks, Steve. Steve, you know what? I almost forgave you there because I think you're actually going to bring me a bear. You better bring me a bear. So look, um, fantastic demo there from the, that day, guys. And I think when you see it on the screen in front of you, it really brings everything together. You can see how it ties in insights, it ties in ACI, CWOM, titration. It's fantastic stuff. And just one point to recap on, App Dynamics isn't just for large enterprises. Small businesses are also getting a lot of value out of it too. Now, actually, have the lovely Nish Parker in the studio with me. Nish, I how are you going on? Um, lots going on today. It's been a busy day. We've had lots of talks, lots of interviews today. I've been wandering around the world of As solutions, indeed. the park, and I saw something really interesting in Build a Bike. Did you see that? I've not seen Build a Bike. You'll so, need to explain it. So Build a Bike is where all these 17,000 attendees here at Cisco Live can head on down and actually physically help to build a bike. And then at the end of the week, we're donating those bikes to some of the local charities here in Barcelona and those who need it the most. Fantastic. And I think CSR is such an important thing and we, we, we can't forget Cisco Live isn't just about the technology. It's also about celebrating the other things that we do here at Cisco. And, you know, Nish, can you tell us a little bit about time to give and what time to give is and, and what's special about that? Yeah, sure. So if this doesn't get you wanting to work for Cisco, I don't know what will, right? <laughs> I agree, <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> so time to give is a program that is um, for all Cisco employees and every Cisco employee gets five days off every single year um, to actually volunteer in any way that they like, right? Yeah. So uh, I think you have some ideas on how you're going to use yours. Yeah, you're right, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> so yeah, I'm actually so going off to Cali and France uh, next month and uh, 16 people, other people in the graduate program, we're a way to support the refugees in Cali and it's an absolutely fantastic opportunity to give back for five days and go and make a difference to someone's life. So Nish, I think it's time to um, hand it over to the first innovation talk. But before we, before we do that, I want yeah. to ask you, I heard you also had um, a time to give um, thing. Last year, was it? Uh, yeah, every year, actually. I make every sure year. I use my five okay. time to give day. So I've got a couple of different things planned mm -hmm. this year as well. Um, but just one of the really key things, I guess, that we want to kind of showcase yeah. to all the uh, attendees here mm -hmm. is you can play a massive part in this as well. So yeah, if you're here, make sure you take a look at the impact zone. Let's watch this showcase. 